Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Thank you so much for staying with us. It's time for us to address something relevant to the International Day of the Girl Child. Now, today we are going to be looking into teenage pregnancies, and a young man named Emeka Chukuleta, who just put out a film regarding teenage pregnancies, is here with Oliver and I to tell us all about the film and exactly what made him or led him in this direction as a matter of fact. So without further ado, let me introduce our guest for the day. Thank you so much for joining us, Emeka. Thank you Thank so you much, Regula. Thank you so much, Olive. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. How are you right. doing? Good, Happy International you. Day of the Girl Child. Oh, now, yes. it became your celebration the moment you decided to do something about it. Yeah. So what spurred you to decide to do a short film? The name of your film is Mercy. So what inspired you to do that film? So I served in a community called Ugeb in Cross River State. All right. And then so on some days I'll come to class and then I'll meet a set of girls. On some other days I will not meet the same persons that I met the first time. I started asking questions about what's happening here, all right? Because these girls were very inconsistent, you know, in coming to class and all of that. In all, in all my question asking and all of that, I found out that there is a serious problem in the community, which is teenage pregnancy, okay? So what happened is that I decided that I was going to make a film about it. I was going to address it the way I could, all right? I wanted my voice to reach out to as many as I could. And one way I need to do it is make films, all right? So what happened is I made a film around teenage pregnancy and then I projected it to the girls in the community. So that was what really inspired it, teenage pregnancy. And tell us a bit more about the film. What is the storyline behind this film? It was inspired by one of my students, actually. All right, so this girl didn't come to class for after about a week or so and I was asking questions about her and nobody seemed to know anything about her. I wouldn't call her name. But then it happened that... Um, People would be making jest of her. That's her classmates and everyone. They were making jest of her. They're like, ah, Copa, don't ask about that girl, this one and that one. So I followed up on the story. I went to her house mm. and I found out that this girl was pregnant with a child. Very unfortunate. How old was she? How old? 14. 14. Okay, so I dug up on the story and I realized that it's a prominent issue in the society. Okay, and they have come to accept it as a culture. If you speak with the elderly ones in that society, they're like, eh, -huh. so what about it? In fact, some will go as, as far as telling you that it's good for them to have as many children as possible for farm work and the likes. Now imagine such a situation. How terrible or how bad is this teenage pregnancy eating into Ugeb, where you served? Would you say that it's something that had become like a culture or something that, was, that had a cultural base? And who, who was impregnating these girls, their mates or their father's mates? Because we have in some communities where... It's allowed. Once you're about 14, 15, you can marry someone as old as your father. Or would you say it's mistakes on the, or carelessness on the part of the girls who are just getting into new relationships? In your investigation, what did you find? Okay, first of all, it's a very prominent issue. All right? I spoke to a doctor, a practicing doctor in the community, and he told me that the average 14-year-old I'm seeing on the street has had at least four, four abortions. Now, I know that's like a big statistic, all right? But then it's something that got me really worried. Okay? Every of these girls... They are pushed either by their parents or their elderly ones to have abortions. If they're going to keep the children, it is because of their own will. All right, and that's how bad it is. And now it is happening that they're being impregnated by girls, by their, by their male counterparts, like their age mates, all right, ranging from like 17 to even older, older folks. Yeah. Okay. And unfortunately, what we also know in society, at least in Nigerian society, is that abortion is also criminalized. Now, the effects of knowing that you're going through with an act that, criminalized, that is criminalized in society <coughs> has a serious effect as well on your mental health. Yesterday was um, World Mental Health Day, True. so let's tie that into this discussion as well. With all the research that you've carried out, what effects did you see this having on the mental health of the girls that you featured? It's terrible, Leila, trust me. First of all, these guys have the they cannot continue with their education any longer, all right? They have to deal with being a mother at 12, 13, 14. What does a girl know about raising a child? And then they have to face stigmatization. Imagine all of these things. So you're talking about criminalizing abortion. Trust me, the realities of our urban society is not the same for our rural society. Mm. We know all of these things, fine and good. But how about those guys in the rural communities? How much of this information do they have access to? All right. That's Although it, it's, not, it's not like it's in the actual hospitals where they carry these abortions, but they have the contact of a lady or some auntie that does abortions almost freely. Wow. Do you understand? So they don't have to look for someone that does, will carry out the abortion for them. So it's easily accessible? Very easily accessible. Beyond focusing on the girl child, 
even though at the end of the day she's at the weaker end of the stick because she's the one that has to bear the brunt of what is happening. How about the boys? Who's talking to the boys? Who's telling them that you should not be problem is this. Girls? The problem is this. This is like a cycle, all right? See, for example, a 12-year-old gets pregnant. She has to raise a child, okay? What does she know about childbearing? She has to raise a boy. What values is she instilling in that, in that child? So what does the child grow up to know? What does he grow up to learn? So that orientation is there hanging around the elder society. So what's happened to these boys? It is that they have, the culture has been imbibed so much in them and it has become almost normal. All right, so there is no one to raise these kids properly. So it's, it's eating into the boys, it's eating into the men, it's eating into the girls. So it's a deep societal problem. It's a very serious societal problem. And I think it also boils down to the fact that there is no one to properly cater for these children. Someone is raised by a 12-year-old. Come on, what do you expect? Very true. And Emeka, of course, <clears throat> this is a very, it's a very disturbing issue to touch on. What would you say is the way forward? First of all, I think a reorientation of, you know, this communities and all of that. I like that there are a lot of NGOs that are carrying out awareness schemes in, you know, in the country. Mm -hmm. But they are mostly focused on Lagos. They are mostly focused on Port Harcourt. They are mostly focused on Abuja. All right, a friend of mine reached out to me recently and was telling me about how that she wanted to start, you know, a movement to stop violence against women. I said, fine, I'm good, beautiful. But if you have the funds, could you take it to the rural community? Yeah. Let's take it there. Let's take this good news to these guys. And I'm really glad that you started this with your film. And yeah. thank you very much for doing this because okay. I would never have known that that's happening in Cross River because I'm here in Lagos. Mm -hmm. But you've helped us to see what's happening in other parts of Nigeria. Before we let you go, let's talk about the film. Where was the film? When was it shot? Where was it shot? And how did you get your characters? Oh, so the film was shot sometime in November 2016. The script, the first script was locked down in sometime around June. But that was at the peak of recession. So there was no funds, really. All right, so I reached out to friends and families and said, okay, you know what, guys? Let's just put together the little you can. If it's 2,000 naira, put it together. Let's make this film. I put together call members, and I taught my friends, this is how to use the Zoom recorder. This is how to use it. This is how to use that. I'm telling you, outside of a friend of mine that had to come all the way from Lagos, some to Nobogu, to shoot, that he was the only one that had some kind of experience in the film. The rest of the crew were all call members. Wow. From the assistant director, yeah, because the story is more important than getting technicalities right. Trust hmm. me. But that is also amazing to know that you can actually make use of the resources that you have around you. You're yeah. maximizing the yeah. potential True. of the people. True. So basically, you, did you, were you the ones that trained everybody who shot the film? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, mm -hmm. that's brilliant. Not only have you told the story, Emeka, you've also equipped people. There's some people who would have found purpose from this film because yeah. they realize that they have a yeah. life of film. Yeah. How can people get to see the full film? It's on YouTube, right? Yes, so the film premiered on YouTube yesterday in commemoration of the International Day of the Girl Child. So for me, I wanted to spark a conversation. I wanted people to use this day to watch the film and then you know, have some kind, of, some kind of thinking and some thought into what the realities of some of the people outside of Lagos, outside of Port Harcourt, outside of Abuja, what is happening in Biosa? I mean, I learned today about the whole numbers of um, the statistics of mm. girls in Biosa that are giving away into early marriages. One of every two girl, one of every two girl under 18 is being given off into early marriage. Yeah. One and we, of every we only two. focus on the number. Look at that number. We don't think it's happening. Look at that number. Yeah, absolutely. It's very saddening. It is saddening, it's, but you know what? People like you are here and you're playing your role and you're enacting the necessary changes that we need to see. Emeka, thank you so much thank you so for much. joining us on Set Say. How can people also contact you on social media? Okay, so my Instagram handle is at Emeka Chukleta. Same for Twitter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank brilliant. You so thank you, Emeka. Thank you so much. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.